next flying action on the screen. The camera record of man's conquest of the skies. Through the magic of this pictorial record, we give you history written in the heavens, drama made in the clouds. It was back in 1903 that the pioneering Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, flew the first heavier-than-air machine above the sands of Kill Devil Hill at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Then came Blerio, flying his animated box kite across the English Channel. Fearless women like Ruth Law forced the coining of a new word, aviatrix. By the advent of World War I, the plane was not only a gadget, it was a weapon. Here's Eddie Rickenbacker and his famous Lafayette Escadrille, the Hat in the Ring squadron, which engaged in so many aerial combats with the Black Nose Richthofen squadron. Those early dogfighters were still a long way, however, from the fighting plane of today. took General Billy Mitchell to show that planes could sink battleships. Bombs away and the battleship is sunk, but for many the plane had still not proved itself. More pioneers were needed and more pioneers were found, such as the daredevil pilots who were first to prove the mail must go through on wings. There was the hero Lindbergh, who took his spirit of St. Louis across the ocean to Paris non-stop. There were Will Rogers and Wiley Post, who lost their lives, but who remained deathless heroes of the air. Amelia Earhart, who flew off into the wild blue yonder. Ruth Elder, a great woman pilot. Here's Ruth Nichols, another gal who proved that women raided wings. It was a risky business flying in those days, and sometimes fate demanded a sacrifice. Here's Gene Bales and his power-packed speedster, the GB, caught by the camera in an unforgettable shot as it breaks into flames above the airfield. Burning wreckage is his monument. And here is that great silver cigar called the Hindenburg, queen of the lighter-than-air fleet. A static spark ignites the hydrogen in her tanks, and in a few searing seconds, she crumbles to the ground, a charred and smoldering wreckage of a great liner of the air. Undaunted, men kept trying to fly, in gyros that take off and land on a bedsheet, in the strange helicopter that hovers, flies backwards, and lands on a dime. And there were stranger contraptions, too. Many a man with a high-flying imagination wound up with his face in the dirt. This pedal pusher was perfectly designed, except for one little point. It couldn't fly. Here's a rocket bike with wings, or how to get a hot foot while sitting down. And here's a human glider. But it was in World War II that the plane really wrote history in the skies. First, the dread dive bombers. The Stukers peppered the ground with machine guns. Their screaming dives spearheaded the Axis drive across Europe until British planes and ACAC drove them back. The plane became the carrier of those courageous parachutists who hit the silk. Here's the P-39 Air Cobra with a cannon in its nose. And the Tomahawk, the ship the Flying Tigers flew. Into the air went the Flying Fortress, the B-17, and its mate, the Liberator B-24, pressing home 1,000 plane attacks, but getting their bombs away while their wingmates were going down in planes. In the late stages of the European War came the Buzz Bomb, a 400-mile-an-hour pilotless plane that could only be caught and shot down by a jet interceptor. Mm -hmm. 
Off the drawing boards came great banana-shaped helicopters able to drop combat soldiers and supplies miles behind enemy lines. Bigger bombs required bigger bombers like this intercontinental B-36 with six piston and four jet engines supplying a mighty thrust of power. In the very last days in Europe, we saw the jet fighters changing fighter tactics, assaulting the very barrier of sound itself. In the Pacific, it was still a carrier war. Corsairs and Hellcats launched from carrier decks, filled the sky and scorched the enemy back to his homeland. His weapon of reply was Kamikaze, the suicide plane attack, pressed home at the cost of the plane and the pilot boat. And what a toll the Kamikazes took before the victory was won. The war over, aircraft development turned completely toward jets. Reaction thrust took planes up to 700 miles an hour. Jet fighters required jet interceptors. strange new experiments with the Northrop flying wing, a frightening vision of the future. And here's the hot new jet bomber, the B-47 Stratojet, with swept back wings and speed near the sound barrier. And a landing speed so hot a parachute had to be released to slow it down for the approach to Earth. Jets not being fast enough, the rocket was built into a plane and the XS-1 dropped from the bomb bay of a mothership straight through the sky at close to 1,500 miles an hour. As for the future, well, it looks like this. Giant rockets burning liquid oxygen and alcohol, maneuvered by electronic devices, point their noses into the sky, to other continents, other planets, who knows where, but always climbing through space to write another great chapter in the exciting history of flying action.